So let's talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra and its corollaries. Corollaries are rules that follow from the original theorem. If the original theorem is true, it also has certain extra implications, and those are called corollaries. So the fundamental theorem of algebra <coughs> excuse me, uh, states that a polynomial has at least one zero in the set of complex numbers. So there absolutely has to be at least one solution to any polynomial. The corollary says an nth degree polynomial function has exactly n zeros in the set of complex numbers counting multiple zeros. So what that means is if we have, say, a function that could be, let's say, x to the fifth plus 4x cubed plus x squared minus 7. There's our function y. Well, this polynomial, since it's the fifth degree polynomial, our nth degree is now the fifth degree, means that it must have exactly five zeros. Those zeros can be a combination of real zeros, complex zeros, and multiple zeros. So zeros that are duplicated when we factor the equation. For instance, let's say we have the graph of x squared minus 4x plus 4. To find the zeros here, we can factor. So this graph actually becomes x minus 2 quantity squared. And if we think about what we know about transformations, we would see that our graph is the graph of x squared translated two units to the right. So this graph comes down, touches the x-axis at 2, and goes back up. Now, according to our theorem, we need two solutions, two zeros. Both of those zeros occur at x equals 2. This is what we call a multiple zero, a double zero in this case, because when we write out the factor, we see that that solution appears twice in our factored form. Remember that double zeros and even multiple zeros will show this characteristic where the graph touches the x-axis and then bounces back in the same direction it came from originally. So we go down, we touch, and then we go back up. An odd multiple zero will cross the x-axis and continue in the same direction it was originally proceeding. Now, our second corollary here says if a polynomial has only real coefficients, then any non-real complex zeros appear in conjugate pairs. And what that means is that if we do have complex zeros in the form a plus bi, well, then we will also have a zero in the form a minus bi, the complex conjugate. So these two will always show up together in pairs, conjugate pairs. So remember, the fundamental theorem of algebra, we have at least one zero for any polynomial, real or complex, and then for every polynomial, we'll have n solutions for an nth degree polynomial.